I am convinced that failure is nature's plan through which she hurdle jumps men of destiny and prepares them to do their work. Failure is nature's great crumble in which she burns the dross from the human heart and so purifies the metal of the man that it can stand the test of hard usage. I have found evidence to support this theory in the study of the records of scores of great men, from Socrates and Christ on down the centuries to the well-known men of achievement of our modern times. The success of each man seemed to be an almost exact ratio to the amount of the obstacles and difficulties he had to surmount. No man ever arose from a knockout blow of defeat without being stronger and wiser for the experience. Defeat talks to us in a language all its own, a language to which we must listen whether we like it or not. Of course, one must have considerable courage to look upon defeat as a blessing in disguise, but the attainment of any position in life that is worth having requires a lot of sand, which brings to mind a poem that harmonizes with the philosophy of this lesson. I observed a locomotive in the railroad yards one day. It was waiting in the roundhouse where the locomotives stay. It was panting for the journey. It was cold and fully manned, and it had a box the fireman was filling full of sand. It appears that locomotives cannot always get a grip on their slender iron pavement, cause the wheels are apt to slip and when they reach a slippery spot, their tactics they command, and to get a grip upon the rail they sprinkle it with sand. It's about the way with travel along life's slippery track. If your load is rather heavy, you're always slipping back. So if a common locomotive you completely understand, you'll provide yourself in starting with a good supply of sand. If your track is steep and hilly and you have a heavy grade, if those who've gone before you have the rails quite slippery made, if you ever reach the summit of the upper tableland, you'll find you'll have to do it with a liberal use of sand. If you strike some frigid weather and discover to your cost that you're liable to slip upon a heavy coat of frost, then some prompt decided action will be called into demand, and you'll slip way to the bottom if you haven't any sand. You can get to any station that is on life's schedule scene, if there's fire beneath the boiler of ambition's strong machine. And you'll reach a place called Flushtown at a rate of speed that's grand, if for all the slippery places you've a good supply of sand. It can do you no harm if you memorize the poems quoted in this lesson and make the philosophy upon which they are based a part of your own. As I near the end of this lesson on failure, there comes to mind a bit of philosophy taken from the works of the great Shakespeare, which I wish to challenge because I believe it to be unsound. It is stated in the following quotation, There is a tide in the affairs of men, which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. Omitted, all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat, and we must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. Fear and admission of failure are the ties which cause us to be bound in shallows and in miseries. We can break these ties and throw them off. Nay, we can turn them to advantage and make them serve as a tow-line with which to pull ourselves ashore if we observe and profit by the lessons they teach. Who ne'er has suffered has lived but half. Who never failed, he never strove or sought. Who never wept is stranger to a laugh. And he who never doubted never thought. As I near the end of this, my favorite lesson of this course, I close my eyes for a moment and see before me a great army of men and women whose faces show the lines of care and despair. Some are in rags, having reached the last stage of that long, long trail which men call failure. Others are in better circumstances, but the fear of starvation shows plainly on their faces. The smile of courage has left their lips, and they too seem to have given up the battle. The scene shifts. I look again, and I am carried backward into the history of man's struggle for a place in the sun. And there I see also the failures of the past, failures that have meant more to the human race than all the so-called successes recorded in the history of the world. I see the homely face of Socrates as he stood at the very end of that trail called failure, waiting with upturned eyes through those moments which must have seemed like an eternity, just before he drank the cup of hemlock that was forced upon him by his tormentors. I see also Christopher Columbus, a prisoner in chains, which was the tribute paid him for his sacrifice in having set sail on an unknown and uncharted sea to discover an unknown continent. 
I see also the face of Thomas Paine, the man whom the English sought to capture and put to death as the real instigator of the American Revolution. I see him lying in a filthy prison in France as he waited calmly under the shadow of the guillotine for the death which he expected would be meted out to him for his part in behalf of humanity. And I see also the face of the man of Galilee as he suffered on the cross of Calvary. The reward he received for his efforts in behalf of suffering humans. Failures all. Oh, to be such a failure. Oh, to go down in history as these men did, as one who was brave enough to place humanity above the individual and principle above pecuniary gain. On such failures rest the hopes of the world. O oh, men who are labeled failures, up, rise up again and do. Somewhere in the world of action is room. There is room for you. No failure was e'er recorded in the annals of truthful men, except of the craven-hearted who fails nor attempts again. The glory is in the doing and not in the trophy won. The walls that are laid in darkness may laugh to the kiss of the sun. O oh, weary and worn and stricken, O oh, child of fate's cruel gales, I sing that it haply may cheer him, I sing to the man who fails. Be thankful for the defeat which men call failure, because if you can survive it and keep on trying, it gives you a chance to prove your ability to rise to the heights of achievement in your chosen field of endeavor. No one has the right to brand you as a failure, except yourself. If in a moment of despair you should feel inclined to brand yourself as a failure, just remember those words of the wealthy philosopher Croesus, who was advisor to Cyrus, king of the Persians. I am reminded, O king, and take this lesson to heart, that there is a wheel on which the affairs of men revolve, and its mechanism is such that it prevents any man from being always fortunate. What a wonderful lesson is wrapped up in those words, a lesson of hope and courage and promise. Who of us has not seen off days when everything seemed to go wrong? These are the days when we see only the flat side of the great wheel of life. Let us remember that the wheel is always turning. If it brings us sorrow today, it will bring us joy tomorrow. Life is a cycle of varying events, fortunes and misfortunes. We cannot stop this wheel of fate from turning, but we can modify the misfortune it brings us by remembering that good fortune will follow, just as surely as night follows day, if we but keep faith with ourselves and earnestly and honestly do our best. In his greatest hours of trial, the immortal Lincoln was heard often to say, and this too will soon pass. If you are smarting from the effects of some temporary defeat which you find it hard to forget, let me recommend this stimulating little poem by Walter Malone. Opportunity They do me wrong who say I come no more when once I knock and fail to find you in. For every day I stand outside your door and bid you wake and rise to fight and win. Wail not for precious chances passed away, weep not for golden ages on the wane. Each night I burn the records of the day. At sunrise every soul is born again. Laugh like a boy at splendors that have sped, to vanished joys be blind and deaf and dumb. My judgments seal the dead past with its dead, but never bind a moment yet to come. Though deep in mire, wring not your hands and weep. I lend my arm to all who say, I can. No shame-faced outcast ever sank so deep, but yet might rise and be again a man. Dost thou behold thy lost youth all aghast? Dost reel from righteous retribution's blow? Then turn from blotted archives of the past and find the future's pages white as snow. Art thou a mourner? Rouse thee from thy spell. Art thou a sinner? Sin may be forgiven. Each morning gives thee wings to flee from hell, each night a star to guide thy feet to heaven.